Yeah, a lot of times they see us joking and laughing and smiling, but to get, you know, a, a, G, a G4 jet, to get a G3 jet, to get Rolls Royces, to get diamond watches, that's after, that's, that's, that, that's, that's later on. All I ever wanted, and the same thing like Adrian, and I think it's really my fault. I say for all these young fighters that's coming up, it's, it's really my fault because when they when they young, they see Floyd Mayweather, they watch, uh, at one particular time, it was 24-7. They watch All Access and they see me flashy, flamboyant. They're like, so if I was a kid and I seen that, I'd be like, I gotta get that same thing. But I don't wanna, I really wanna tell these young fighters, my whole focus, all I really wanted to be was the best. I didn't care. When I was went to top rank sometimes and they said, well, um, we can't afford to pay you for this this fight, this next fight on this date. I said, how much can you pay me? And they gave me a number. I'm the, uh, just throw a hypothetical throw number out there. They said, when they can pay you 7,500 or 10,000, I'm like, give it to me. Because I seen a bigger picture. I wasn't thinking about just right now. I knew I was gonna have a, a long career because uh, my dad told me this. This is the first thing my dad installed in me when I was younger. He said, the less you get hit, the longer you last. So and now I look at look back at my career. Still sharp, but as of right now, I'm still sharp. I'm still on point. I left I didn't let the sport retire me. I retired from the sport. I mean, shit, if I was Steven, would I want Floyd Mayweather to come back? Absolutely. I'd give him the whole brakes truck. I'm off. I'm off. But, you know, this is about, this is about Adrian. I stand behind Adrian. I want to continue to support him. Sometimes he'd be upset. Big bro, no, no. Just relax. You know, I'm here with you. Just relax. You know, he's only human, I mean, and it's just like this, you know, they're going to take shots at him, but I, I tell them all the time. Certain people in the media, or certain people on social media, or people that don't even know you. Everybody's an internet thug. Everybody's an internet gangster. Everybody can type up something negative about you, something bad about you. Everybody can make up fake stories. And at the end of the day, I tell them that this, like, everybody here right now can judge me and say, oh yeah, we know what I'm saying? I mean... At the end of the day, that little lady right there, that's that's what I care about. And that's the same thing that he should care about. Your children, because that's who's gonna love you through thick and thin, through it all. If you if you make a lot of money, if you lose it all, your children aren't gonna love you unconditional. The media is gonna move on to the next. The fans are gonna move on to the next. They're gonna keep inventing they're gonna keep inventing more and more fighters. And one time it was, at one time it was Janera Hernandez. This kid is crazy for fighting them. Then they come and say, Angel Man Freddy, the next best guy that quick, they wipe him out the box. Then they say, oh, this guy. Then they say, oh, that guy. Then they keep building. Then they say, Diego Corelli's on the feet. Then they say, Ricky Hatton. Then they say, De La Hoy. Then they say, Al Canelo. Then they say, Pacquiao. And all I say is this. I tell AB this. Always have patience. You want to get to where you're trying to get to. A true champion can take a loss and bounce back. And I don't have to take a loss in the ring because I took losses on the outside of the ring. When I, lose, when, I lose, when I lose a loved one, that hurts deep. No different from when I, my best friend killed himself on FaceTime when he committed suicide and murdered his wife. You don't think that hurt? But still, mentally, I have to be in the right place because I know that I have a whole company. I, I have a whole company that's backing me and believing in me. I didn't want to let Stephen down. When Stephen put his, when I went to Stephen and I, and, and I said, this is the deal I want. First I went to HBO and said, this is the deal I want right here. And once they couldn't get the deal done, it's not like I wasn't loyal because nobody knew this. I fought under HBO for years. Just fight to fight, fight to fight, fight to fight. And it was let, and telling the world, making the world think that I was under a contract and I wasn't. Fight the fight, fight the fight, fight the fight. Then I finally said, when I came home from doing my little, my little small bid, I said, listen, this is the deal that I need. They said, 
Nobody's going to get him a deal. I went to Steve, he said, no problem. So I will always be loyal to, you know, I'm, I'm always be loyal to people that treated me good. And they didn't treat me good, they treated me, they treated me great. Within my deal, every, everything that I wanted within my deal, I got. And everything that I asked for within my career, I got, but I had to go out there and produce first. You have to go out there and produce first. And I say, okay, I say, yo, listen, I need this big boy mansion built. It costs 15 million, I need it. I need this built. I said, no problem. I was re and I was retired when I got that bill. Okay, that's, that's, that's one thing. When I wanted the Bugatti, I got it when I wanted, when I wanted three jets. I got it, but I had to go out there and produce. This is not nothing that happened overnight. Same thing with Adrian Broner. He's gonna get to where he got, where he wanted to get to. I'd have been in the gym. I don't have to see a, a fighter fight. I can see him in a boxing gym, and I get to see certain movements. I said, oh yeah, I can see why he world champion. Because when I, when, I, when I say this, I really mean this. McDonald can punch. I have been, been in there with some of the best. And every guy that's at the top can punch. They all can punch. No different from when you look at, you know, we, we, we look at Canelo. And then we look at Amir Khan. And they say, oh, Mayweather did this to Canelo, so Amir Khan's gonna be able to do the same thing. <coughs> It's, it's, two, it's two totally different fighters, it's two totally different worlds. There's a difference between, I tell you this all the time, there's a difference between being talented and God gifted. There's two, two different, you got a lot of talented fighters. But when you mix them all together, I'm talented and God gifted. So I got two things on my side. Most fighters only got one thing. And we, we will see Adrian Broner, we will see the best of Adrian Broner. And this guy that he's fighting is not a pushover. And I'm gonna to continue to help him grow and push his company. You know, it's a great feeling to wake up and say, damn, I took this guy who was just, this fighter who was walking to the boxing gym and taking a bus to the boxing gym to make his seven figure paydays. But I had to work, it wasn't easy. Bobby Jack never complained though. He never complained, he never complained, he never cried. All he said is, every time we got him a fight, he never complained about the money. Most of these fighters nowadays, all they do is bitch and complain about the money. We want the money, we want what Mayweather got. Well, you got to take the same road Mayweather took. I fought 17 times in a year and a half before I fought for a That's the reason why I fought for the world title and I fought the best guy at the weight. And then once you get to a certain point, a certain pinnacle where you accomplish everything that you want to accomplish, then you got to say, what next? Then you want to see people, everybody around you, win and accomplish certain things. Because there's nothing else I can really do in the sport no more. You late with it? I'm kind of already been here. Okay. <laughs> we'll come back. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to pass the mic back over to A. Go ahead.